Now, stay tuned for a special presentation from 10TV. All right, Jack, yeah. let's take a look at your Christmas list. Well, let's see what you're asking for from Santa. Yeah, well, it's not all for me, you know that. My gosh. Oh, yeah. The giraffes have to have a back scratcher. A back scratcher? Yeah, you're looking how big they are. Yeah. Oh, well, you got to scratch your back. The elephants only need a thing of a bob. I think I can handle that. When the elephant lasts for something, you give him what he wants. You take this whole building down. But, well, I understand. Yeah. And gorillas are asking for a bubble bath. Bubble bath? Or gorillas? The cheetahs are asking for a spot remover. Now, can't do that. So cheetah, that's how you, you don't want that. No, no. Okay. The, the poor cheetahs. I know they might want a spot remover, but sometimes I want my hair to go back too. But that doesn't happen. I like uh, sea lions in the zoo and wear blinker fluid for my truck. Whoa, 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 whoa! Did you say sea lions? No, not sea lions. I'm not. You understand, Santa? Not lions. Like, ah, uh, these are sea lions. They run around in the water. Hmm. Jack, I, we, can, we can make that happen. Wow. This is fantastic. Thanks, Santa. From the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, it's Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Bites Holiday Special. everyone to Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights. We are coming to you from the world famous Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. I'm Angela Ann. And I'm Pete Scalia and we are joined by the one and only Jack Hanna. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> hey Jack. Good How are you? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to be here. <laughs> Wow. Now, we wanted to point out, too, we're inside where it's nice and warm because Jack has brought along several oh. of his animal friends today. I've seen these in a while jump from here all the way over that, that reef right there. Easy. Oh. Wow. Well, you know, Jack, we've been doing this show with you since 2009. Well, Can you believe it's been 11? What do you mean here? What do you mean here? Oh, my oh, gosh. Come on, you for a little while. <laughs> We are so excited to spend the next hour with you. And we have an excited group of kids here, too, who want to see a bunch of animals tonight. That's right. So right here. Our guests tonight come to us from a very special organization called NC4K, Nellie's Champions for Kids. And as many of you know, NC4K supports families with children who are fighting cancer. And you guys do amazing work. And so we're so excited to have them join us here tonight. In addition to meeting all those animals with Jack Hanna, before we continue in here, we want to introduce you to another member of our team who's outside among the wild lights. Yolanda Harris is somewhere in the zoo taking in these three million lights. Hey, Yolanda. Hi, Pete, Angela, and Jack. I'm out here in front of this giant snowman that greets visitors as they enter the wild lights. How cool is that? It puts you in the holiday mood right as you walk in. Now, this is just the beginning. Coming up, we'll head over to Conservation Lake to check out the two new light shows happening there. And we're gonna meet up with Columbus Zoo President and CEO, Tom Stoff. But first, here's a look at what's to come in the next hour as we go into the wild lights. We're talking sea lions, seals, sloths, and snakes as we bring the wildlife to the wild lights tonight. Three, two, one. And as we celebrate the holidays and count down to the new year, we'll look back at the progress being made on the zoo's most recent expansion project called Adventure Cove. And who doesn't love a baby? Ashley Barracy will be here to show off a few of the zoo babies born here in 2019. Plus, Pete and Angela are joined by our friends from NC4K, an organization that supports children with pediatric cancer. Tonight, some of the kids in our audience will be special animal ambassadors as they assist Jungle Jack Hanna in bringing the wildlife to the wild lights. So, we welcome our first animal here, Jack. We want to introduce our first animal ambassador. That's me. I'm the first animal. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> this is our first animal ambassador. Okay, you're Big right. Big difference here, right? But her name is Marley Phillips, and she's 10 years old from Marysville. Come on out here, Marley. She's got friends, Jack. Come here. Well, who does she have with us? What are these, Jack? Oh, wow. Cats. 
<laughs> all right, so Susie, tell us more about these sand cats. Well, sand cats, first of all, you're very fortunate to see them because there aren't very many zoos that even have sand cats. So we're very excited to have them here at the Columbus Zoo. Um, sand cats, there's not a lot known about them, Angela. They live in the desert, so it's one of the few um, cats that's truly, truly a desert cat. They don't require water. Mm. They wow. get their moisture from the food that they eat. And the sand cat, you can find them in Sudan, in Northern Africa, all the way to Turkestan. Mm -hmm. So they're in Africa, the Middle East, and in Asia. Well, and now the Columbus Zoo. And now yeah. the Columbus Zoo. First time I've ever seen them. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Wow. Really is. Yeah, we've never had them here. And never. we know, Marley, you have some uh, interesting facts about sand cats too for us. Um, they can travel up to 25 miles per hour. Wow. 25 wow. miles per hour. Did you know that, Jack? No. <laughs> <laughs> he does now. He stopped him. What else do you know? Here. Oh. Uh, uh, I've never done that. I've never done that. <laughs> You're the first time I've ever done that, but you answered the question, they didn't give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Marley, thank you so much for telling mm -hmm. us about the sand cats. Very cool, right? Yeah. And what, by the way, right now we want to introduce you to another member of our team, Doppler 10 meteorologist Ashley Barrissey. So she's outside among all the lights out there. They're just beautiful, aren't they, Jack? And, oh, they are. Uh, and I think she maybe has a really neat spot overlooking Conservation Lake. Hey there, check out this view. The lights are so much fun. In a little bit, I'm going to meet up with Susie Rapp of the Columbus Zoo, and she's going to introduce me to one of her friends. And did you hear there was a baby boom at the Columbus Zoo this year? So I decided to bring my family out and our little baby. We're going to introduce you to the cute little animal babies of 2019. You don't want to miss it. I think we should take a photo here. It's fun. What a great idea, Ashley. Yeah, and of course, Ashley and her husband have a little baby at home. And with all these zoo babies, can you imagine how many dirty diapers need changed? Ooh. Coming up, I've got the scoop on the poop. No joke. I mean, we're talking about fertilizer coming up. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can do about 10,000 animals that way sometimes in Africa, South America, all over the world I go to. Are you kidding me? Especially when I'm in a tent at nighttime, they go to the bathroom right outside the daggum tent. But I'll tell you one thing, when a sloth goes to the bathroom, you don't want to like, be anywhere, anywhere around that animal. You don't know Jack! Well, welcome back to Jack Handa's Into the Wild Lights. And you know, it's not something you might think about when you visit the zoo, but with over 10,000 animals, they can really accumulate a mess, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, as a matter of fact, last summer, I got to meet the zoo's chief pooper scooper. His name is Chris, and I wanted to find out what they do with all that number two. <laughs> hey, Chris. Hi, Pete. How are you? Doing all right. All right, so what are you going to have me do today? Well, I'm going to have you hop in the truck. We're going to go around to all the animal areas and pick up all the animal poo. This is going to be our first stop of the day. There we go. You got to yes. protect the eyes. You want to try to go for the controls? Sure. There you go. Now you're going to want to look out. It's going to get a good splash going on. Nice work. First barrel done. Can you tell from looking at it what kind it is? You know, from looking at it sometimes no, from the smell usually yes. I would say when it comes to worst smelling poo at the zoo, the penguins and the polar bears win hands down. Mainly because they, they eat fish. And so coming out the other end, that is not pleasant at all. Reverse of that, the best smelling poo is definitely the binturong, also known as a bear cat. They've got a butter popcorn smell to them. So every wow. time I stop by those barrels, I wanna go see a movie. Where are we off to next? <laughs> okay, next we're going to camels. Camels? Mm -hmm. Judging by the size of the hump, I can only imagine the size of the dump. All right, look at that. Every day I'm stopping by every back spot for every animal that we have here. So it's safe to say all the animals at the zoo are pretty regular. <laughs> yes. The pachyderm stop is definitely gonna be the heaviest. It's gonna be about a ton to two tons every day. Wow. Yep, we also pick up kitchen scraps, but on a daily basis, we're averaging about four and a half tons of animal poo per day. All right, so <laughs> I guess the next question is, where do we take all this stuff? Every day we haul it up to 
Uh, Price Farms Organics. Two years later, they're gonna turn it into what they call Zubru. And that's our spot right there. All right, Chris, here we are, let's do this, the big dump. So we got our levers, this is gonna pull up our back end, and this one's gonna push it all out. We were at about four and a half tons, wow. or 9,000 pounds. I think there's a full cantaloupe. Hopefully that didn't pass through one of the animals. Well, if only there was a way you could smell this at home to really <laughs> take in. It's quite pungent. It stings the nostrils. Hi, I'm Tom Price uh, here at Price Farms Organics. We've been in operation about 20 years. What we got going on here, Pete, it takes about two years. We hurry up the process of recycling in the woods. If you can imagine what a woods does over a period of 100 years, and then we do it in a matter of a couple. Closing the circle is what, what we're trying to do, and the zoo uses a lot of this zoo brew back in their beds. All right, Thanks Chris. for helping me today, Pete. Man, I really appreciate you showing us around, and so now it's gonna sit there, marinate for a few years, and then people will be able to put it in their garden. We appreciate all you do with the number two. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Good times. <laughs> Is it over yet? Is it over yet, Jack? That was like your first job here when you first came here, too, right? You did everything at the zoo. I sure did, yeah. A lot of poop, yes, there was. <laughs> Take a look at what Jack has for us now. You said the sloth was the smelliest animal you have ever encountered, so we have one here with well, us right now. I thought now. you said what jackass has, but you said just jackass. Yes, <laughs> yes. <Okay>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I just... Didn't hear it right. <laughs> well, you know, Jack, helping us out tonight is 14-year-old yeah. Carter Davis of Orion. How you doing, Carter? Hey, I'm Carter. doing pretty good. Tell us a little bit about your friend. Yeah, um, actually, they're really fast swimmers using their long arms to propel them through the water. Fast oh, really? swimmer? Yeah, fast. You couldn't tell by looking at him, could you? Yeah, you're right. A lot of people don't realize that. They do well in the water. They don't do well on the, the land. If right. we were to right. take Sid and put him down here, he would not feel very comfortable. Notice his long legs. He yeah. typically he wants to hang from those. And when Jack was talking about the smelliest animal, sloths aren't smelly right now. But let me tell you, this is an yeah. animal yeah. that only goes to the bathroom once every four to five days. Yes. Oh. So when it does go, it's quite smelly and it's quite a lot. Yeah. So Jack, the sloth makes it count when he has to go number yes. two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the wild, they come down out of the trees and go on the ground. So exactly. That, yeah. The, it's, huh. an, it's not uncommon for a sloth to live his entire life in maybe one to three trees. Yeah. But yes. when they go to the bathroom, Jack's right. They're going to come to the bottom yeah. of the tree, yeah. go to the bathroom, and climb back right up. Right back up. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you, Carter. We appreciate you coming in tonight. And uh, you've met Carter and Marley, two of our helpers tonight, Jack. Oh, and great. right now we want to introduce you to more about NC4K. Mm -hmm. They have a very special partnership with the Columbus Zoo. Nellie's Champions for Kids, or NC4K, is an organization first founded by Nellie Corvo. These parents come up to you and hug you and say thank you so much for doing this we wouldn't have Christmas it's what it's all about she was only 16 when she knew she wanted to make a difference in the life of a child fighting cancer so it began as a single fundraiser a fashion show called Nellie's catwalk for kids inspired by that night the organization and its purpose expanded tenfold Good job. you see when a child is diagnosed with cancer everyone in the family is impacted Moms, dads, brothers and sisters, doctor visits, hospital stays, and the flurry of appointments all take their toll. Often one or both parent is having to stop working, um, so there is an income drop for them. Mandy Powell is NC4K's executive director. Those regular everyday expenses become quite a hardship. Um, and so when we're able to say, don't worry about your mortgage, don't worry about your water bill this month, we've got you covered, we know from our families that takes a significant burden off of their plate. Today, NC4K is helping families from all over Ohio, more than 600, and it has raised over two and a half million dollars in the 13 years since its founding. The whole family unit is very important. Um, we know that the more we can facilitate those memory-making moments, that togetherness, that community, we know that's gonna help them through their, their cancer journey. One of the fundraisers, 
the Fighting Faces calendar. Every year, NC4K and the Columbus Zoo produce a calendar featuring 12 children who are battling the disease. Look at David Carmelo. Images are captured as the kids pose with the sometimes furry and sometimes cuddly creatures of the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. The final product is an inspiring and touching tribute to all of those children who have bravely fought cancer. NC4K's motto, no one fights alone. And tonight, we stand with and celebrate those children and their families with us here at the Columbus Zoo. All the kids in the audience, they've all been in one of these calendars before. Uh, oh, yeah. So special. So you know what? Everyone at home is going to want one of these calendars. And you can order yours by visiting columbuszoo.org or yep. just pick it up at the gift shop right here at the zoo. It really is a nice one. It is. Yep. And also for more information about Nellie's Champions for Kids, just go to nc4k.org. And uh, once again, we want to thank all of you kids and the moms and dads for being here. How about giving your moms and dads oh, a round of applause? Yeah. And there's much more to come too here with our friend Jack Hanner as we celebrate the holidays at the Columbus Zoo. Right now, we want to go outside to meet yet another member of our wildlife team, <laughs> Doppler 10 meteorologist Jack Booth. Hey guys, someone said y'all were going to be at the Wildlights, and I didn't want to miss out on the fun either. You know what they say, this is a great place to bring your family, and that's just what I did tonight. I brought my family and actually one of their friends. Say hi guys. Remember, a visit to the wildlife isn't complete without seeing some of the creatures here at the zoo. And while it's a little late to see some of them, we're going to head on over to the reptile building where there's always someone, or should I say something, awake. That's coming up. But we've got a lot of ground to cover out here first. Are you guys ready to look at some more of the lights? Yeah. Let's go. I'm in the airport trying to get to that gum gate. Gonna go from Columbus to there and then Montana. All of a sudden, I hear this hijack. In the, you know, I say hi to people, but there, but there were Girl Scouts, about 30 of them, screamed it in the airport. Hijack! Hijack! hijack, hijack. I went like this hijack screaming. Over here comes a policeman. Not one policeman, three policemen. This way. My gosh, no wonder the way they say it. Not hijack. I like people, but just say, how you doing? Maybe that'd be better. <laughs> Welcome back to Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights. I'm Yolanda Harris here at the world famous Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. And if you've been to the zoo in the past year, you've seen the construction as you walk in. A major new attraction is opening this spring. And the headliner, a special group of animals who've been on a long journey to their new home. It may be hard to imagine now, but in just a short time, all that will become this. And it's all part of building a home at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium for these. I can't wait for all our guests here to meet their sea lions when they arrive. Wait. Wait. I am Susie Rapp, and I'm Vice President of Animal Programs here at the Columbus Zoo. And right now, we are in front of what is going to be our brand new Adventure Cove. This project has been in the making or in the works for a long time. We haven't had sea lions here for 35 years, but to be able to design a facility to share these species with all of our guests is something that I have wanted to do for 25 years. A massive undertaking, Rapp and her team say the construction of Adventure Cove will increase the zoo's footprint, all while bringing animals much closer to the entrance. New buildings, animal habitats, pools, and filtration have all been integrated into the area. But the spot they're most excited about is a one-of-a-kind experience that puts zoo visitors inside the exhibit. This is going to be our the wow of the whole project. So what you see roughed in over there is all acrylic. So we have these acrylic, and this is going to be a tunnel. So there could be sea lions on top of us, and you'll be able to see them. None of this plastic will be here. It will be clear. You're underneath the water, and you will have the ability to see sea lions swimming underneath you. There is nothing like this in any other facility. 
While building Adventure Cove hasn't been easy, getting the stars of the show to Columbus has been an even bigger challenge. You know, we had to not only secure the animals, then we had to figure out how are we going to get those animals from China to here, to the United States. And, and then the other thing was we weren't sure when this exhibit would, would be done. So we were very fortunate we found a private facility um, in Florida that we were able to bring the sea lions to. We have trainers down there working with our sea lions daily, living on the property, and we are so excited to bring them all home. And even though the sea lions and seals are a huge part of Adventure Cove, the experience for zoo visitors won't stop there. We have another building called Animal Encounters Village, and that's a building that will have eight outdoor habitats along with eight indoor habitats. These are animals that are trained, that travel with Jungle Jack Hanna. They've traveled the country. You've probably seen them on many of the national television shows. You may walk through and see a sloth at Tamandua penguins, and then six hours later, you're gonna come back through the building on your way out, and you could see completely different species of animals. Wow, what an amazing journey for these sea lions, and I really can't wait for Adventure Cove. Joining me now is the guy who helped make it all happen, Columbus Zoo and Aquarium CEO and President Tom Stolf. Tom, thanks so much for having us oh, out thanks here. For oh, it is beautiful this time of year, Absolutely I tell you that. Is. Well, you know, Adventure Cove, it is an exciting time for that, but what are you most excited for? Oh, there's so many things to talk about. You know, Adventure Cove is our largest region in the history of the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, and I think it's probably the most exciting area. How about walking through a tube and sea lions all around you. It's never oh, been done. from top to bottom, side to side. 360. It's never been built ever in the world. And you're going to see it here at the Columbus Zoo. So when, when Adventure Cove opens in the spring, I'm telling you, you will be coming back day after day because it is going to be thrilling. I know a lot of people are excited for that to open. And you mentioned that you helped save these sea lions and provide a proper forever home for them. So they are very lucky. And that's one aspect that people in our community might forget that this place is in our backyard, but it's also a leading partner worldwide in conservation of wildlife and their habitats. Our sea lions and seals will come in a couple months before we actually open, so you'll be hearing them barking and calling. It's going to be real okay. exciting, and it's because we're doing our training. Our animal trainers have been with them for years, and so now it's time to bring them here to Columbus in a few more months, and then we'll open up in May. Oh, this is great. Exciting stuff going on. And you know, Tom, don't go away because coming up, you and I are going to go out into the wild lights, and I know that you have some other big Big news to share, Zoo News, and Doppler 10 meteorologist Ashley Barrissey is out and about right now too. So as we take a break, we're going to toss it over to her for a look at what's to come on Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights. Ashley. Hey, it's so much fun out here and there's so much to look at too. Coming up, I got the scoop from Susie Rapp on the hidden gems here at Wild Lights that are great places for the kids and fun for mom and dad too. Hi Jack, my name is Charlotte, and what is your favorite dessert? My favorite thing, the morning I'm alive today, is cookies. Sue, my wife, has always done chocolate chip cookies. She makes them herself for me, and they're incredible. I can eat like, well, she says only three at a time. Well, she says two, but I do three to five. Here comes the cookie man. It's difficult to eat four or five of them after dinner. It doesn't mean they gotta make fun of me. And some people have made them this big for me. Okay, you pig, here. Take a chocolate chip cookie. Uh, fine, that's fine. Call me a pig. Call me a big pig. I don't care. Or a hog. Call me a hog. Anyway, so. <laughs> Those cookies do look good, Jack, for sure. Yeah, like Welcome them. back to Jack Handa's Into the Wild Life. So we're having so much fun here tonight. But now it's time to meet another animal. You guys ready? Yeah. Bringing out our next animal. This is Jack Fulkert from Dublin. Hey, hey Jack. Jack F. Meet Jack H. Oh, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> That's my daughter, Julie. I think Julie. you guys have met before. Hi. Hi, Julie. Hello. It's all right. So, Jack, why don't you, little Jack, little Jack. we're going to call him little Jack. Hey, little Jack. <laughs> yeah. Or big Jack, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us, what, what kind of animal do we have here? A kangaroo. There you go. Oh, there we go. Are you holding right? Is Are you heavy? Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. No. You're holding a kangaroo. Jack, how heavy is the kangaroo? Um. It's okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know your question? That's pretty cool. Yeah, we what, understand you have a question. Tell us? What do you call a lazy baby kangaroo? Hmm. 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 Do you know the answer? 
he better know the answer. Well, <laughs> yes, it says pouch potato. <laughs> <laughs> Potato. Do you have another question, Jack? What's a kangaroo's favorite type of music? Oh, what type of music? Now that's something I know. You know what that means? Hip hop. Oh. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. By the way. I actually just wanted to throw in too, you know, Jack, I mean, next year is 2020. It's the year of the kangaroo. Yeah. Well, it's oh. because it is a leap year. Uh, oh, uh, oh, geez. Uh, oh. No. That is good. I haven't heard that. Remember that, will you? And by the way, I actually heard that one of the zoo's kangaroos had, a, had to visit the health center recently. Uh, do you know how the operation turned out? Uh, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> Right. Jack, great job. Thank you. Well, you know, Jack, in our last segment, we saw the construction that's happening at Adventure Cove, and yeah, that's going to be wrapping up this spring, and we're so excited because we're talking sea lions yep. and seals to the zoo. Exactly, right the front entry of the zoo. And now we're at City Wrap right here is the one that came up with all this stuff. And, you know, it's amazing even what you're going to see at the front of the zoo. Now, we know that you had a chance to visit with the sea lions in Florida over the summer with your yeah. wife and your grandson. How excited are, are you about Adventure Cove opening? Um, I think it's going to be one of the greatest ones we've ever opened. It really is. The activity you're going to see with those sea lions and those seals jumping around out there. It's going to be amazing. It really is when you walk in this zoo and see those animals because they are fun to watch. You're going to walk through that zoo and you're going to hear the uh, Jack can tell you those sea lions are loud. Well, you guys are excited to see Adventure Cove, right? When it opens. All right, so that's coming to us in the spring of 2020. But right now we want to send it out to Ashley Barrissey again, who's been making her way around the zoo, taking in all the wild lights. Ashley. Hey there, I'm inside Asia Quest, which is a great spot to warm up and see some animals while you're at Wild Light. I'm meeting up with Susie Rapp because I've been told she has a special friend she wants me to meet. Hey Ashley, look who I found. It's Rudolph and the Abominable Snow Monster. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. And here you can take pictures with Rudolph and friends like Hermie the Elf. And then of course, Bumble, the adorable Abominable Snow Monster. And you even have a new friend this year, Bumble, Yukon Cornelius. How much fun. It's so much fun. But Ashley, a lot of people don't realize when they come here, there's lots of animals to see. Yes. But tonight we have someone real special in honor of you because for those of you who don't know, Ashley just had a baby about yeah. three months ago. That's right. And I have two new little babies oh I want to share with you. Oh, how sweet. This is little Derek and you're holding Duncan and these are 10 week old baby dingoes. And dingoes are wild dogs found in Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> And um, they have made their new home here at the Columbus Zoo. Oh, I love it. And this one's even giving me kisses. <laughs> well, it definitely has been a busy year for births and deliveries. It has here. been a very busy yeah, year. Yeah, the Columbus Zoo. So let's go ahead and take a moment to introduce you to the adorable animal babies that we have here now at the zoo. This year, new baby animals joined exhibits in several regions of the zoo. The Australia and the Islands region had many of those births, including these slow loris twins. A slow loris is a mammal from Southeast Asia. They're quite small, almost the size of a football, and normally they live alone in the trees. Also in the nocturnal building, another species that lives in the trees is the Australian walking stick. You'll have to look closely to see these little guys. Coming in at only three to five inches, they curl their tails to imitate a leaf for camouflage. We have three koalas here at the zoo, and when they're finished with their eucalyptus, our Australian walking sticks gladly take the leftovers, and that's what they live on. In the North America region, you'll find these adorable Mexican wolf pups. Sisters Soul, Snow, and brothers Augie and Fresco are the newest members of the pack. They're a nearly extinct relative of the North American gray wolf. Onto the aviary, you won't find two turtle doves, but there are some nickel bar pigeons. Nickel bars are the only living relative of a dodo. A bird with perhaps more style is the Caribbean flamingo. The zoo hatched three flamingo chicks this year, but you might not recognize them right away. They're covered in soft white downy feathers and their beaks are actually straight. That's actually to help them break out of their egg. It can take about two years for them to get their full brilliant pink color that we think of when we think of a flamingo. The chicks Neil, John, and Terrence all got their names from Ohio astronauts. 
Back in the Australian Islands region, guests throughout the year were treated to the antics of this family. Meet the white-handed Gibbons. Mom, Shawnee, and Dad Leo had a baby earlier this year, though we don't know yet if it's a boy or a girl. Right away when the baby is born, it clings to mom. We've seen the baby kind of start to taste some food here and there, bananas, cooked sweet potatoes, soft things like we would introduce first to babies as well. Aw, look at that. Love me some zoo babies. And look here, I've made friends with these cute little guys inside at the petting zoo. Another great place to check out while you're at Wild Lights. And Jeff Booth is standing outside of another place you can find creatures and critters out here at Wild Lights. Hey, Jeff. Well, I'm outside of the reptile building, and you know, this next guy we're going to meet is a little less furry and cuddly and more sneaky and slithery. Last year, the Columbus Zoo welcomed the king of all snakes, a king cobra, and we went behind the scenes to find out how they care for the snake known here as His Majesty. On this day, we're checking in with reptile keeper Kristen Jenkins, who's going to show us how they care for His Majesty and refresh his habitat. I have to be able to service his habitat, clean him, um, maybe put some enrichment items in there for him. And so the way that I can safely do that is we have an off exhibit area that I put those rewards in. So today our King Cobra is getting two rat pups. He'll get one of those inside his shift area as his reward for shifting. So I'll go ahead and put that there. Make sure this is nice and locked and secure. The tasty snack is awaiting his majesty, but the keepers don't exactly ring a dinner bell to notify the king. Since snakes don't have an eardrum, they can't hear if we call them into the back. I've trained him that as I flash the lights, it means something's about to happen. He is very sensitive to any vibrations that are in his enclosure. He'll feel the vibrations as I open the habitat door and he knows to go into his shift because there's going to be a nice delicious reward waiting for him. Then I'm able to service, do all the great things inside his habitat and then I reward him for going back out into uh, that area as well. Back in his home, the king is ready to meet his loyal subjects. Our King Cobra, His Majesty, is really active. And so we see him doing a lot of moving around, pretty active throughout the day, investigating, climbing, and even sometimes interacting with our guests. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. So we got a little idea of what the reptile zookeepers do, but what about some of the other zookeepers and what they do here at the zoo? Well, it turns out the zoo has a tour program that'll show you just that, and we're gonna go along on a tour coming up. Now how about a peek at some more of those wild lights as Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights continues right here on 10 TV. Welcome back to Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights. I'm Pete Scalia alongside Angela Ann, and we're joined once again by the legendary Jungle Jack Hanna. Woo! So, Jack, we're going to meet another animal right now, and helping to bring out our next animal is Jaden Sin from Galloway, who has a fennec Hi. fox oh my with her. Hey, Jaden, how are you? I'm good, how are you? So Jaden, you're a sophomore at Westland High School. Have you ever held a fennec fox before? I have not, but it is very soft. Wow. <laughs> very so soft. What can you tell us about the fox? Um, yeah, so their large ears help them to hear um, small mammals and insects underground. Those what? are some pretty big ears, Jack. Where are they from, sweetie? Um, they're mainly found in the Sahara Desert and, um, yeah. The Sahara Desert yeah. and the and Sinai they're, Peninsula. They're that big for another reason too, aren't they? Not just hearing? Yeah, it helps them keep them um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it helps them keep them cool. Um, wow. Yeah. Awfully cute with that tiny little face with the great big ears, don't you guys think? Yeah! <laughs> and believe it or not, Pete, that fox is full grown. Really? That is not a baby fox. In but fact, right. that is Fergie, and Fergie's probably about four years old now. Really? And um, that's a full-grown fennec fox, so it's one of the smaller foxes. Yeah. And they are found in Africa, where it's very, very hot. Mm -hmm. And you were right, they use those ears to hear things. They like to primarily live in the desert, mm -hmm. so they're going to dig in cracks and crevices in the desert, but they're going to be able to hear different types of insects and small mammals right. oh, crawling on top, and they're also going to use those ears to help cool them down. There's blood that's actually running through the veins oh, wow. in those ears, very similar to that of an elephant, exactly. and yeah. it helps cool really? them down. Yeah, people wonder why the elephant has those big ears. Yeah. Look, if you ever look behind the elephant, you see the big vessels, and they flop them all the time in Africa. When we film them, they stay, stay alive. 
Wow. Well, yeah. very cool. Uh, we just want to remind everyone that the memberships here to the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium and the Wilds really make some awesome Christmas gifts, don't they? Yep. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the membership comes with tons of perks, discounts, and access to members-only events. And the Wilds, by the way, it's only a 90-minute drive from Columbus. Such an easy trip. And you've been out there quite many times. It's amazing. Every time I go out there, I can't believe it. It's like, it's like I'm in Africa. It's like I'm in the Wilds. It really is. That's why you call it the Wilds. And it's right here in Ohio, so exactly. it's a great Christmas gift for anybody. Mm -hmm. But let's toss it out to Jeff Booth, who has another great gift idea. Well, if you're looking for a last-minute Christmas gift, how about a wild encounter tour at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium? It's a behind-the-scenes experience like no other, and we went along to give you a peek. On a much warmer summer's day, we tailed along with the Columbus Zoo's education ambassadors as they brought guests to places that few visitors will ever experience. On a wild encounter tour, you'll choose between one of four places to explore. The Animal Health Center, the Giraffe Barn, Manatee Coast, and Discovery Reef. Inside, you'll get a glimpse of the zookeepers, caregivers, and veterinarians working, as well as many of the animals, and learn how the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium goes above and beyond to care for the 10,000 species that call this place home. So this is one of those other surgery rooms over here. Our first stop on the tour was the Animal Health Center. So this is one of our gorillas over here just getting checked out. Again, the keepers are right in there with her. Allison, our tour guide, showed us how the Columbus Zoo is using the latest technology and techniques for both preventative treatment and emergency care for the wildlife that call this place home. And that CAT scan machine is newer. Uh, and our first animal that went through when we got it was actually a cat. We then caught up with another tour group at a building with very tall doors. And you're going to notice it's nice and cool in here. On this day, the barn was empty as the giraffes soaked up the rays outside at the Heart of Africa exhibit. But inside, our guide Barry showed us around. like the Okapi are very similar to the ones we have in our giraffes. This door is 18 feet tall. Our tallest one is 16 feet 6 inches. See the barrels over there? All right, that's where we put the grain in. Look at the hay racks. There's your alfalfa hay. Ready? One, two, three. This is what we're doing today. That's our finale. All right. The next tour group we caught up with was behind the scenes at the Manatee Coast. Home to these beautiful and friendly marine animals, the zoo's manatees are cared for in this state-of-the-art pool with elements that mimic what you'd find in the wild. We'll just throw some branches in for the manatees and they like to chew on them. Behind the scenes, we saw other pools that assist in the rehabilitation of manatees that are rescued from the wild. The Columbus Zoo is one of only three sanctioned facilities that can rehabilitate the manatee so they can return to their native waters. It's another reason why this place is so special. Our final stop was dropping in on a tour at the Discovery Reef Aquarium. The 88,000 gallon saltwater habitat is home to numerous species of fish, stingrays, sharks, sea turtles, and coral. So these are all of our animals that go out into our touch pool. But what you see out front is only half the story. These guys are all target trained. We have three zebra sharks. The target just has a specific shape on it that they're able to recognize. Check out what the aquarium looks like from this angle. That's right, on the tour you get to climb the stairs and walk above the tanks. A little tail sticking out. You'll see the dive gear that the staff wears when cleaning the tanks, as well as the other pools that are used for caring and rehabbing other aquatic creatures. Hey Ashley! Hey Susie! Welcome to Jingle Ball! Oh thank you and hi Trout! Trout. This is great! Isn't this amazing? Yes. A lot of people don't even know this is here. I mean they see it when they walk by but they don't realize what it is. Yeah, where exactly are we okay. located in the zoo? Right by the Discovery Reef. Well kind of right in front of the Discovery Reef. Right behind you is Manatee Coast. Right across from us over there is the reptile building and the penguin exhibit. Oh, so, so Trout's not too far from his home. He's not, and it's just a perfect place to be. Absolutely, and so if you're walking through the zoo, I know that you'll be drawn to these glowing globes that are also kind of dancing to music. They are, and that's the cool thing. But we have this incredible playground. So Trout can play out here, and the kids can burn off energy and with them. It's a perfect place to be. It's a great place for families. It's a great place for the kids to burn energy. And if it's cold, Ashley, the buildings are open. You can go in the reptile building. You can go into Discovery Reef. It's a great spot. I always tell people, if you're not in the holiday spirit, you will be, you after, will you be after you leave here. I promise you that. Thank you so much, Susie, for showing us around here. I'm truly enjoying every light here at Wild Lights. 
Coming up, much more with Jack Hanna and all of his friends as we take you into the wild lights. Plus, we're talking polar bears and singing bears with Tom Stolf as our special from Wild Lights at the Columbus Zoo continues. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights. I'm Yolanda Harris, joined again by Columbus Zoo and Aquarium President and CEO Tom Stolf. And Tom, we're inside a polar frontier right now, and this is right outside the polar bear habitat, and that has been a really busy place lately. Tell us why. Oh, we are so proud to announce that we have a baby polar bear. Ooh. Yeah, you know, and it's so rare. Last year, we had three cubs, and that was the only three cubs in the United entire United States, North America, all combined. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's funny because when I talk to people about our excitement, they say, oh yeah, we saw them last year and then the year before. This is so rare. We're so excited about it. Yeah, you guys so, are world renowned. So now this little baby, you'll see in the spring with mom, it'll be real exciting. Is it a boy or girl? Well, we don't know yet. You don't know it, yet? I mean, it's like this big. It, it was just born. Well, that is certainly a lot to be proud of here at the Columbus Zoo, but also out at the wild. You guys have had some excitement out there. It's been a busy year because you've had some bursts out there. Oh, highly endangered animals. When we talk about our Asian rhinos, we have a little baby there, a white rhino, little baby there. We have a baby giraffe and then a ton of cheetah cubs. We have six cheetah cubs that were just born. Saw the picture of those. Oh, we're talking about, you know, and the thing that I love about it is these are highly endangered animals. They need our help and the wilds is so special. You guys don't just breed for the sake of visitors coming to the zoo and to the wild. You actually do this. This is work to preserve a species, species preservation and conservation. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have 114 different conservation projects in 46 different countries. So we really make a difference and our animals are here as ambassadors. So we're learning from these animals. We want to make sure that we inspire people. We're connecting people with wildlife. You guys keep that good work going. Well, you know what? When you visit wild lights out here, everybody, Polar Frontier, where we are now, this is a really popular place with the kids this time of year because there's another pretty important VIP who hangs out here during wild lights. Who's that, Tom? Uh, Santa Claus. Santa. <laughs> That's right. Santa's here. We're going to toss it over to Jeff Booth, who I've been told is in a new area of the uh, zoo out here. It's called Camelot. You heard of Camelot? Never heard of Camelot. What's that? Oh, hey, Yolanda. No, no, I'm in the camel lot. Oh, wait, the camel lot. Sorry for the confusion there. You know, they have camel rides here at Wild Lights, and it's a fun place to stop when you're making your way around the zoo. And I got to warn you, if you are going to do this, it does cost a little bit extra for the camel ride, but it's only a little chomp change, so it's really not too bad. If I can get our crew to bring the camel quarter in closer, I'll show you what it's like to ride on one of these guys. Okay, have I embarrassed my daughters enough yet? Any more bad dad jokes that they're going to be too embarrassed to even be seen with me if I tell them? I might need to wear my camouflage. But seriously, it's important that you check out the camels here at Wild Lights because it's a special year for this attraction. Christmas, of course, falls on a Wednesday this year, also known as Hump Day. Let's toss it over to Pete and Angela now. Wow, let's hear for Jeff's family who were willing to appear with him tonight. Yeah, and by the way, Angela, you know, I mean, I kind of had a hunch that Jeff might pull a stunt like that. Mm-hmm, how so? Well, all week long he's been singing his favorite Christmas carol at work. What's that? Well, you know how it goes. Oh, camel ye faithful. <laughs> well? You just got the best eye roll from Jack Hanna. We're keeping that. All right. Uh, we're going to need to take a break, so don't go anywhere because we're going to close out this show with Jack and maybe a couple of surprise visitors when we come back. So don't go anywhere. You don't know Jack! I'm Cameron. Hi, Jack. How are you celebrating Christmas this year? Oh my gosh. One of the first times. The whole family's together. Now you may say, well, why, why aren't our family together? Well, my one daughter married mm -hmm. a British guy for 22 years ago. Uh, one of them lives in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I'm out in Montana mm -hmm. or somewhere else, probably mm -hmm. Florida, I don't know, where, or even mm -hmm. here, but to put them all together has just been impossible. But this year, everybody, they're all coming together, and we're so excited. So you know what I had to do? I had to go tell them we're gonna meet in Florida. <laughs> That's not real Christmassy, but these are all young people, and they wanna meet in Florida. <laughs> so I said, okay then. Now, if they think we're gonna get a Christmas gift, um, they'll get candy, yeah. <laughs> you don't know Jeff! 
Oh, all right. How special, Jack, to have your whole family with you in Florida this year? Well, it is. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get these kids that are anywhere from 12 to 21 years old in oh, three different yeah. countries. It's not easy. Yeah. How about that? And by the way, Jack, before you go, how about we end the show with a special surprise guest? Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, I can't believe this. I guess that means everyone's been on the nice <laughs> list, right? Yeah, Santa Claus, he's bigger than Gorilla. <laughs> We want to thank everyone at the Columbus Zoo tonight for making this happen. Tom Stoff, Susie Rapp, Pete Fingerhut, and Shannon Swin. And a big thank you to all our families and NC4K. Yep. Our great audience that's been with us tonight. And if this show has left anybody in the giving spirit this holiday season, again, consider a gift to NC4K. They do amazing work for our community sure with families who are fighting pediatric cancer. Yep. And of course, we want to say thank you, our viewers, who help make 10 TV Central Ohio's news leader. We appreciate you watching every morning and every night. So on behalf of everyone at 10 TV, the Columbus Zoo, and of course, the Jungle Jack <laughs> Hanna, we'd like to say, Happy